You said you had some notes, so I'll just kind of riff off you then. Yeah, let me <clears> finish <throat> up my little fucking project here. Fucking four. Yeah, hold on one sec. Well, I don't have any goddamn fucking files. Motherfucker, fucking bullshit. Fuck fucking. Dick beat motherfucker. The sound of you rummaging through a junk drawer is very entertaining on my end. Hold on. Yeah, sweetie, I'm okay. I just can't find my pliers. Fucking piece of shit. Alright. Hammer. Do I have a hammer? Yeah, I got a hammer. You are totally the biggest mark. The brain, the Hulk Hogan, you can go to hell. And all these people are a bunch of stinking bums, aren't you? The reigning United States heavyweight champion, Brett Hitman Clark. This fucking million dollar piece of fucking computer equipment has to ask me all sorts of questions to figure out what I want. <sighs> all right, I'm ready. Ready. All right. Hey, hey, everybody. It's the Grant and Clay fucking drink too much beer podcast. Just kidding. It's the Late to the Nitro Party podcast. And today we are going to be watching or reviewing, I should say, Hog Wild 96. This is going to be a special report on the pay per view Hog Wild 96 to make sure all our loyal viewers are caught up with the storyline going into the next Nitro. Hogwild 1996 took place on August 10th, 1996, from Sturgis, South Dakota, at the Sturgis Rally. In a field. <laughs> in a field, surrounded by mountains, approximately 5,000 confused redneck bikers watched this uh, on television, or pay-per-view, I should say. No, the, bike, the bikers the- didn't. They watched it from... Sorry. True. I'm sure. I'm sure some of the people watching it on paper view bikers. Bikers as well. can't afford television. Okay. Um, That's right. Fuck you guys. You're not listening to this anyhow. <laughs> the pay per view buy rate on here for uh, Hogwild '96 was a point six two, which equates to approximately two hundred and twenty thousand buys nationwide. So, um. This pay-per-view opens with a nice helicopter shot. That will be a uh, recurring theme for the pay-per-view. Several helicopter shots. We get some Mount Rushmore, um, and eventually we're going to cut to uh, Tony Schiavone, Dust- the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and Bobby the Brain Heenan. Um, Grant, how would you describe their attire? It's the equivalent of, and I hope everyone gets this, uh, when when Doc sends Marty back to the Wild West and tries to dress him so he will fit in, it's the same thing, only biker gear. That's 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 a fairly fair assumption. I should uh, I, I forgot to mention we do get a small video package of the wrestlers riding their motorcycles to Sturgis. Wrestlers that would include Scott and Rick Steiner, Sting and Ray Trailer, Medusa, Eric Bischoff. Uh, also, um, we get a, a shots of who, from now on, I'm going to refer to Cretans, um, <laughs> scantily clad biker chicks, which are uh, not that great to look at. We also get a nice little uh, graphic with a tire played over uh, played over the top of this is going to be a total ripoff of the Chicago the mid '90s Chicago Bulls entrance music that they used to play. Yes. Uh, and we get another helicopter shot. So here we are, Sturgis, Hogwild 96. Um, so uh, overall, what do we think of this show, Grant? Um, you know, it's it's interesting. To the big to the big picture storyline, it's it's a pay per view that you would always mention because of what happens in the main event. Um, I don't know. Uh, Ill conceived, I guess, would be. I, I mean. As we'll see, we'll talk about a few of these different matches. There's a couple of really good matches yeah. on this card, and it's totally lost on the crowd because they don't care about it. They're, they aren't there for wrestling. 
They're there for the biker rally, and hey, wrestling's going on. Let's go watch that. It should also be noted that Tony Schiavone has one hell of a fake tattoo. Yes. Uh, did you notice that? Yeah, no, that was great. It's, it's, it's uh, it appears to be a dragon or a griffin or maybe a bald <laughs> eagle. I'm not sure. So first match on the card is going to be uh, Rey Mysterio Jr., who is the cruiserweight champion. Oh, hold on. The... I, got, I got to jump in and tell you that okay. you're fucking wrong. Oh, we got dark matches. I don't have those in front I, of me. Go ahead and run I, those down. Yeah, and let me Sorry. let me give a quick rundown of my notes up to this point. Um, it's our per- first pay-per-view at Sturgis. Uh, in 96, the popular. So what would you say the attendance was? Approximately 5,000. The... the, the um, uh, the census uh, says that in 1996, the population of Sturgis is 5,678 people. So the whole town came so out to see it. If you want to look at it that way, yeah. Um, why are we here? Motorcycles. What does that have to do with wrestling? Nothing. Uh, this is the first and only time it's called Hogwild, which I feel would have been more popular if the hog were actual pigs and this was at the World Barbecue Cook-Off. Um, it's a 16 bout card. The first eight matches are shown on WCW Saturday night. Um, it should be noted that this pay per view takes place on a Saturday and not a Sunday. Because the Sturgis rally ends Sunday by noon, everyone's gone. So the first eight matches they just went ahead and showed on Saturday night live from Sturgis. Uh, the network doesn't even show these eight matches. You would have to have access to that WCW Saturday night, I guess. Um, so, uh, anyhow. Run. Run those matches down for uh, us. Public Enemy defeats Dick Slater and Mike Enos in 347. Uh, Conan... Did... I'm sorry. Hey, show some respect. They're rough and red. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, Conan defeats Chavo Guerrero in 424. Nasty Boys defeats High Voltage in 322. Oh, oh. Uh, Alex Wright defeats Bobby Eaton in 30 seconds. What the fuck? I know. Dungeon of Doom defeats, oh, this is great, Joe Gomez, Jim Powers, and Mark Starr. Dungeon here, represented by the I, Taskmaster, Ming, and Barbarian. They defeat Gomez, Dun- Powers, and Starr in 306. So the, dun- the Dungeon of Doom versus the Party Boys, Basically, I yeah. believe we, uh, we dubbed them. Squire Dave Taylor defeats Mr. JL in 237. DDP, longest match of the undercard, defeats the Renegade in 653. And I really, truly, genuinely wish we had this one to watch. Arn Anderson defeats Hugh Morris in 40 seconds. Damn, I assume that's just a spine buster and see you later. Yeah, no, it must have been a face off and, so, and bounces off and spine bust him and that's it. it. In this in this undercard, we have a Alex Wright squash match and a Arn Anderson squash match. Two things you don't see that often. No, no, not at all. Um, pretty cool that they got no matter how short they are, how how many matches they got on the undercard. Yeah, they got eight matches on a WCW Saturday night. Um, so that's your undercard. Those are your dark matches. Um, hopefully one of these days that'll be on the network, but we're still waiting on that. So the first match of the evening is going to be two foreigners <laughs> against each other that these uh, redneck bikers... Um, I was actually surprised at how much Rey Mysterio was over in this match. He got a little, he got a pretty good crowd reaction. It's going to be Rey Mysterio Jr. versus the Ultimate Dragon or Ultimo Dragon, depending on which website you're on. Yep. Um, Ultimo Dragon is with Sonny Ono, and this match is for the cruiserweight title. Um. Yeah. Um. It's it's. I mean, it's a good match. It's everything you would expect on. Uh on paper to see from these guys. Um, Dave Meltzer, which however you feel about Dave Meltzer, we'll keep our thoughts to ourselves. But Dave Meltzer gave this match three and three quarter stars. Um, pretty good rating. The match goes 11 minutes and 35 seconds with Mysterio going over. I can't remember how the match ends, but I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure it's great. I don't have dick for there, notes on any of that. Um, there is, there is a spot in this match. You'll notice the ring is elevated. Yeah. And then there's uh, like one row of mats, and then there's like another five or six foot drop. Yep. Uh, Mysterio dives off that some bitch, yeah. and that's probably the high spot of the match. That's pretty awesome. So, um, 
Ultimo Dragon works a lot of martial arts style. Sonny Ono's in on the outside with a uh, leather, yeah. excuse me, a leather jacket and uh, sort of a like a like a beaver skin hat type ensemble. He, he looks like the stereotypical like Japanese motorcycle gang. Like I buy, oh, I yeah. buy him. It's it's stereotypical as hell. Rey Mysterio in this match is wearing his uh, Spider Man gear. Yes. Um, this is a good match. This is also the one where we get the USA chant, right? Yes, USA chant in a uh, in a. I remember writing that down in the notes that I forgot at my house, so they're doing me a shitload of good right now. Um, yes, a USA chant in a match with a Mexican and a Japanese guy. So, um, a lot of big high impact moves from both guys here. Um, Ultimo Dragon will hit. Um, some superplexes, a running power bomb. Um, good match. Check it out. That's one of the matches on here I would recommend going to see. Yeah, it's a it's a great way to start the card, and it ends up being how WCW would start most cards in years to come. Yep. Usually gets fired off pretty good. Until we get to the next match, which is a singles match, where Scott Norton defeats Ice Train <laughs> in five minutes, five seconds. Grant, your thoughts. Okay, so we kind of discussed this before we started started recording um i think that i mean we all know that this this pay-per-view is only a pay-per-view in the format that it's in at sturgis because bischoff likes motorcycles pretty much um why not do a live on tv super event kind of like a clash of the champions um that way when you book this card the way you need to book it for the crowd to be into it they're they're into it and the people at home feel like they don't get screwed out of money because scott norton versus ice train is exactly what this crowd wants to see they want to see big burly biker guys just beating the beating shit, the out shit out of each, each other. other ray trailer should be on this card norton's perfect ice train's good just big fucking bad you know honestly uh, a a guy like like tenta would probably get over pretty good with a crowd like this I'm going to isolate the audio of you saying that Ice Train's good <laughs> and blackmail you with it. Um, um, before before this match, we actually do get another um, video package showing the town of Sturgis and all its lovely residents yes. for this week. Um, but so the, but the no, angle. I, I, on- I hate this match. It's a stupid match. It's a shitty match. <sighs> Norton is perfect for squashing people and he's perfect for those short matches. If he's not squashing someone coming out, beating the shit out of someone and them coming back and, and going over him pretty quick. Um, not a super technician. Wouldn't matter if he was because ice train would ruin the whole thing, but <laughs> for the crowd, I mean, this is what they want to see. This is, so, this is some of the smartest um, booking for the audience on the card. The angle, the angle of this match is of course, Scott flash Norton and ice train were a tag team of fire and ice. They're, They've broken up, they're having a match, and Ice Train has a bad arm or shoulder that's wrapped heavily in gauze. Oh, he got, and he, Nor- on, on the, in the storyline, he got jumped before. Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, he got jumped backstage, I believe. I wasn't exactly sure why he was injured, but he just was, so I went with it. Um, so they pretty much clubber each other for five minutes. Um, Norton gets the win with a Fujiwara armbar. Um, and, uh, yeah, submission win for Scott Norton. There you go. Now we're going to get a, uh, interview with Ric Flair, um, where he's going to talk about the attack on Arn Anderson. Um, what are your thoughts here? I, it's good. I like where they're going with this. Um, I, it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty serious yeah, interview. Yeah, no, um, I, I like this version of Ric Flair. Uh, to kind of to kind of build it up and get him ready for this whole Horseman New World Order feud. Yeah, it's it's a very uh, personable interview. Um, very very serious. He's not doing his normal nature boy um, shtick, I should say. Yeah. Uh, going back to that Mysterio Ultimo Dragon match, uh, Mysterio wins that match with a top rope hurricane. Ah, oh, there we go. There you go. So Flair calls out the NWO because they attacked his best friend. We get a nut yet another helicopter shot of uh, all the bikes and everything. They paid so, for that helicopter. They're using it. 
This is helicopter camera the paper. <laughs> it would have been a better concept. So up next we get the Battle of the Bikes, uh, Medusa versus Bull Nakano. This match uh, goes five minutes. Uh, Medusa goes over, defeating Bull Mc- Nakano. It should be noted, I'm not really sure why Medusa won, because the ref just sort of says that she won. I'm guessing she won by DQ or something. It's very confusing. Yeah, from what I read, both of their shoulders were down on the three count, and Medusa got hers up. Okay, because I remember when I watched this like last week, it was di- I did not understand what had just happened. I think it was I all. think it was kind of a botched finish. Yeah, something. Um, Nakano rides a pretty sweet uh, Japanese flag um, crotch rocket to the ring. Medusa rides sort of a a lavender uh, Harley to the ring so whoever wins this match gets to smash the other one's bike with a sledgehammer um N- bull nakano is fucking awesome yeah like she's got uh oh this is your favorite part of the whole pay-per-view what's she got in her hand grant so the the quote <laughs> of this whole fucking deal the whole show you can shut it off after this uh dusty road saying numchuck Numchuck. Bull hit her with a numchuck. Yep. She done hit her with a nunchuck, baby. Uh, and he's just screaming it. So how is she not DQ'd right now if she's fucking hammering her with nunchucks? That... Is it because Ra- is it because Randy Eller's incompetent? Well, it's because the rules only apply when they need them to. So, um... This match, yeah, it kind of has a fuck finish. Medusa gets a shoulder up right at the end. Uh, it was a German suplex by Nakano. Medusa gets a shoulder up. Nakano's shoulders are down. Nakano goes to smash Medusa's my- bike. Randy Eller says no. Yada, yada, yada. Medusa gets the sledgehammer from Sonny Oma- Ono and beats the shit out of a Honda crotch rocket. So, um... Uh, that's pretty much that match. We also we go to a nice CompuServe ad <laughs> yes. with, the, with the Steiner brothers in denim jackets and leather hats, and Rick Steiner attempting to type is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty obvious he hasn't spent a lot of time. He's a real estate real estate agent now. He is. He's probably they should give him a do over. So the next match is, in my opinion, the match of the night, but nobody cares about it. We have a singles match between Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko. The Benoit defeats Malenko in 26 minutes and 55 seconds in the second overtime period. Dave Meltzer gave this match four and a quarter stars, so he gave it an incredibly uh, good marks here. I remember uh, I had this pay-per-view on VHS. I paid money for this. That's how much of a sucker I am. Um, and I remember this match being one of the matches that really got me hooked on pro wrestling. It's 26 minutes. There's no breaks. They beat the shit out of each other. It's technical. It's impactful. It's intense. And literally nobody in the crowd gave a flying shit about this match. No. <clears throat> so, um... Malenko, or excuse me, Benoit goes over with some outside interference from woman. Um, the, the crowd doesn't care. They do not care. The crowd is dead for this entire match, and it makes me sad. However, another plus to this match, have you ever seen Miss Elizabeth look this good? This is about as scantily clad as she ever gets. It's, uh, I'm, I'm down with it. I'm incredibly down with it. Um, she, we're always used to seeing her being very classy, and uh, she uh, she's slumming it up a little bit right here. So Benoit wins with a roll up after some interference from a woman at 26 minutes 55 seconds. All kinds of moves in this match. We can't talk about them all. Um, it, go watch it. I mean, put it on mute so you don't have to hear the crowd shit all over it, but go watch this match. Um, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. So up next, we've got the Steiner Brothers versus Harlem Heat. 
Grant, what stands out to you about this match? This is—is is this for the tag titles? Yes, this is for the tag championships. Fuck, I don't know. I don't have any notes on this one. So, um, the, this match goes 17 minutes, almost 18 minutes, 17 minutes, 53 seconds. Harlem Heat wins. I'm sure it's not a clean finish. I can't remember exactly what happens. I'm going to look at it here in a second. Uh, Harlem Heat's with Colonel Robert Parker and Sister Sherry. Um, what the crowd think of Harlem Heat? <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Um... Yeah, you know, they they might have noticed that uh, Harlem Heat looks a little different than most of the people in, in the crowd. Um, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm not sure they were terribly accepting of the diversity yeah. in this match. Let's put it this way. After the match was over, um, they're, they're, the finish involves uh, pow- powder to the eyes. Harlem Heat goes over after all kinds of interference from Sherry and Parker and whoever the hell else. Um, Stevie Ray and Booker T pretty much run to the back. They don't hang around yeah. and posture for the crowd because the crowd is not a fan of Harlem Heat. If The match isn't bad. I mean, you got a lot of good workers in this match. It's pretty stiff. But the crowd is... Heavily in favor of the Steiner brothers, and they're revving yeah. their bikes and getting all crazy, and they Harlem Heat they they did not care for. So the finish to this match is when uh, Robert Parker hits uh, he hits Booker T in the eyes with powder, but Sister Sherry hits Scott Steiner in the eyes with powder, and then Colonel Parker hits Scott Steiner with a cane. <laughs> And Booker T covers him for the pin. Just your basic Steiner Brothers, Booker T, Stevie Ray match where there's no fucking finish. Um, it should be noted, when the match is over, people start hucking shit at Harlem Heat. Yeah. They start throwing shit at them. It's a little bit uncomfortable to watch because they are not very accepting of them. They start throwing shit, and Harlem Heat pretty much runs to the back to get this fucking match over with. And get out of there before anything else happens. So, um, up next, okay. So I just, I gotta interject. I, I believe Bull. I believe Bull <laughs> is driving me nuts because I didn't write it down at the time. Uh, I believe Bull Nakano's bike is a Honda CB. Medusa's is a Harley, but fuck, I don't know my Harleys. We're gonna have to ask her on on Twitter. I'm saying it. I think it's like a soft tail. Yeah, it. Yeah, it I'm, is. I'm not a bike. I don't know. I don't know what model it is though. Not a bike guy. So um, we get more helicopter shots of the local high school football field. <laughs> helicopter shots of a hot air balloon. Um, we get more video from the uh, wrestlers starting off their bikes. They started from the Mall of America in Minneapolis and rode to Sturgis. We get uh, Mongo, Ray Trailer, Paul Orndorff, uh, Medusa, and her mom is on the motorcycle with her. Um, I wonder if they people, uh, ate pasta mania. They may have. Both Steiner brothers, uh, Scott Steiner's wearing some pretty sweet Zubaz pants. DDP, Kimberly, and we're all about Kimberly. Medusa's looking pretty sweet in a tank top on her bike. All about that. So, uh, another video package. Just wrestlers on motorcycles, if you're into that sort of thing. Next match, Ric Flair versus Eddie Guerrero for the United States Championship. Ric Flair defeats Eddie in 14 minutes, 14 seconds. Dave Meltzer gave this match three and a half stars. Um, Good match. I enjoyed it. Um, Yeah. Flair's Flair's being Flair. I don't understand, and I know it's something we've discussed uh, on Nitro. I don't understand how these guys, Malenko, Benoit, Eddie, uh, we haven't seen much out of Saturn yet, but how they go from the booking being the way it is now. I mean, if you took someone back that didn't know anything and and had them watch this, they'd say, oh, yeah, these guys are headed for big things. They're, fuck, Guerrero's fighting for the U.S. title against Flair here, pretty high up in the card. Um, 
you know, Benoit is getting a pretty good rub. Uh, you would expect these guys, it, it looks like their stock's riding, or uh, rising, rather. Um, and then it just kind of peters out. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, Flair, or, uh, it's, it, it's funny to watch Flair taking moves he's not used to taking. Yeah. Because he's taking, like, tornado DDTs and fucking head scissors and shit in this. It's an inter- entertaining contrast of styles. Both of these guys can work with anybody. Um, I think at some point in this, Flair hurts his wrist. He goes for a backdrop on or a back suplex on Eddie that kind of gets botched, and they both kind of fuck each other up a little bit on accident. Yeah. But Flair's going to win via pinfall via the figure four with a woman holding on for more leverage. So Flair picks up the win. Um, pretty much what you'd expect. Eddie playing the, you know, the plucky underdog Flair cheating to win against a smaller opponent who's maybe outclasses him a little bit. Um, it's starting to get dark here. That's kind of a cool thing about this pay-per-view, about how it starts off in the daytime and the sun's going down. It gives it, I would say, kind of a cool look. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I wonder how that is for the guys right in that time period where you can't see yeah, especially, shit. Especially if you're looking directly into the sun. Yeah, no, you've got that, and then you've just got that kind of odd time where it's, I don't know. It's easy to get hit in the face on accident. Right. Magic hour. The magic Can't hour. Can't see. Exactly. So up next, we have the outside. Well, let's see. I think there's a uh, another video package. Yep, more helicopter shots of motorcycles. Uh, we get an interview with the Giant, who is currently the uh, champ and who is now a baby face um, with me and Gene. And uh, the next match is Sting and Luger versus the Outsiders, Hall and Nash. Holy shit, Sting's outfit. Yeah, and I I remember in my notes, uh, Luger titty flexes nonstop. Far, far too much. Way more yes, than usual. I noticed that as well. Yeah, it's a nervous tick at this point. Uh, yeah, I think it is. So Sting comes out wearing a black, gold, red, blue um, sequins jacket with a headband or bandana on and Luger is in black trunks, black boots. Yeah. Or black trunks, white boots. One of the two. Uh, yeah, black trunks, black knee pads, white boots. He's pretty vanilla. Hall and Nash are in their usual, uh, usual attire that we'll come to know them in. Um, I was impressed with Kevin Nash in this match. Yeah. Nash had his, Nash had his working boots on a little bit. Him and Sting, uh, him and Sting did well together. No, for sure. The, uh, uh, this isn't a bad match. The finish is gonna come when uh, this is sort of the first time we get an inkling of maybe Nick Patrick isn't on WCW's side. So, Grant, what's the finish to this match? This match is. Hold on, let me. I know I got. Oh, for fuck's note. sake! I got it in my notes. I found him. Yes. Maybe. Dead air. Fuck you. Um, oh, Sting gets out of the outsider's edge, and he tags in, he tags in Luger. Um, and I think it's Sting and Nash on the floor, and Lex tries to put Hall in the rack. And what the? They run it. They, they run into with Mick Patrick. Patrick. And then, okay, so... Luger goes to get um, Hall in the rack. Um, in doing so, they run into Nick Patrick. Right. Nick Patrick sells it like he's just inhaled anthrax. Right. Nick Patrick gives a suspiciously intentional-looking forearm shiver to Luger's knee. Yes. When Hall is in the rack. Yes, that's what the hell it is. So and that's, the same, and that's go- the same knee he hurt. Because Sting has Nash in the Scorpion Deathlock on the outside. Right. He takes a he takes a shitty looking ref bump. They they fuck this up. Like Luger can't quite get Nash up in the rack. I don't know if Nash is sandbagging him. And then Patrick 
gives him a forearm shiver to the back of the knee. Hall covers him, and then Nick Patrick gives the fast count that he should have given yeah. at Starcade '97, and the match is over. So it, it it's it's meant to look intentional. But yeah, Nick Patrick's a dirty ref and is in the pocket of the NWO is what this is going to lead to. Spoilers. Yeah. So we get more shots of motorcycles, and then we get the main event, Michael Buffer, who got paid about twenty ten, grand ten, for this. Ten thousand per appearance is what he charged at the time. Damn. I remember. I remember that factoid. So, um, Hogan? Dude, Heenan, by this point, I don't know if you noticed, dude, Heenan's fucking drunk. Was he he, getting a little, was he getting a little sloppy? He's slurring his speech a little. So, um, just for the times on that, the Outsiders go over Luger and Sting in 14 minutes, 36 seconds. The main event, WCW World Heavyweight title match, Hollywood Mm -hmm. Hogan defeats the Giant with Jimmy Hart in 14 minutes, 55 seconds. Um, holy shit, the stalling yeah. in this match. Yeah. You you can tell they're just trying to buy time. It's, I don't, I don't mind, I mean, it was too much stalling. I don't mind stalling. The issue is, is why is Hogan stalling? Because he fucking wins a test of strength. That Oh, I have that it underlined. Uh, we'll get to that. Okay, first off, Hogan's t-shirt that he comes out in is awesome. Yes. Do you remember what it is? It's the NWO with the skeleton of the T-100. Yes, yes. NWO Terminator shirt. If anybody has one of those out there on eBay, I will buy one from you. It's fucking awesome. I do like that Hogan comes out first, yep. which surprised me. Yeah. I figured Hogan would come out second because he always comes out second no matter what. Um... So yeah, the giant gets in the ring. Hogan stalls constantly. Um, Hogan outquicks giant a little bit, and then Hogan wins a goddamn test of strength with the fucking giant. Yeah, and then he throws, what? and then he throws him down one handed. Yeah, what the fuck? He was Hogan was never able to do this shit to him when he was a baby face. Right. So what the fuck? He had to goddamn run him off the top of a building with a fucking monster truck. And and he does it repeatedly. He overpowers the giant, who has easily overpowered everyone in the fucking company. Yeah, it's it's kind of bullshit. Like so, they should have had they should have had Hogan get his ass kicked and, and then cheat to win. Telling is Right. Yeah. So the question it's storytelling bullshit. is why is Hogan stalling if he's stronger and faster and better? Like he out wrestles them. He's faster. He's stronger. Why the fuck's he stalling? He's constantly grabbing him in headlocks and shit and overpowering him and just Yeah. Giant hits a nice back suplex though. That's about one of the few moves in this actual match. Yeah. Um yeah. Hogan wins a fucking test of strength. It's bullshit. Um Giants about to hit the choke slam. Outsiders run in. They both eat a choke slam. Hogan gets the belt, for, nails the giant. For some reason, Go Randy ahead. Anderson doesn't doesn't call for the bell when there's two fucking no. people in the ring and he's looking at them. Right. It's so um Yeah. Hogan gets the belt, nails the giant with it. The giant lays prone in the middle of the ring forever. For literally fifteen minutes. He's dead. He killed him. While the post match shenanigans are going on, I'll say this: the giant took a hell of a whack with the belt. Randy Anderson actually makes the three count in this match while laying over the top yes. of Kevin Nash, yes. which is absurd. Yep. It's like how how are you not DQ'd? You just had two guys run into the ring. We've seen everyone and their mother get hit with this fucking belt and not go down that long. Yeah, you see people the, get hit with chairs and not go. What the fuck? Yeah, the giant literally has to sell it like death because they have to do their entire post-match celebration which is the, in the ring. Which, which is the best part of the second half of this pay-per-view. It, it's the best part of the whole fucking pay-per-view. Only, other than only, the only, be, only because of Brutus the fucking barber beefcake. So um, Hogan, Hall, and Nash are posturing in the ring over the prone body of the giant, who props to him... He just lays still as shit while people are nailing him with water bottles and shit. Yeah, he does good. I mean, pe- 
people are throwing shit in the ring. And then uh, then the booty man brings out a goddamn cake. And uh, then what happens? Well, um, it turns out Hulk Hogan doesn't doesn't like cake. You might have thought he did, but he doesn't. That's empty carbs, brother. Can't get my pump on with some cake, brother. <laughs> well, um, it looks like he's gonna gonna join the old New World Order. He's wearing the shirt. Yep, he's wearing the ter- same Terminator shirt that Hogan was wearing. Brings out a cake with a bottle of spray paint jammed in and it, and then they fuck him C- up. Cuts a promo about how him and Hogan are best friends. Yep. And then Hogan orders Hall and Nash to murder the Booty Man, and this is the last time we will see the Booty Man in this current, uh, in his current form. He'll be back in a couple years, but as the disciple. So no more Booty Man. Thank Christ. Yep. So um, closing out the show, Hogan spray paints the belt with the NWO. And we get to see that belt on television for the next um, year and a half. So enjoy that. <laughs> Hogwild 96. One thing I remember about this show, because as I said before, I had this on VHS. As only WCW can do, the, the uh, box art on the VHS <laughs> was Hogan flexing on a motorcycle in his baby face gear red and yellow yep so if you're a dumb shit kid like me you buy this it's just hulk hogan stuff and all of a sudden hogan's a heel on it with no explanation yeah no if you're you're not following the product at the time so they had to have taken the picture for the box art for this months in advance like they knew they were going to turn hogan heel what the fuck shoot a different picture Jesus Christ. Yeah. As Tony Schiavone would say, is a goddamn clusterfuck. But so that's our special report on Hogwild '96. Check it out. There's a few matches on there worth watching. Um, like I said, we're doing these special reports just to keep everybody um, in tuned with the uh, with the storylines for going into the nitros. So next week we'll be back. With the Nitro immediately after, two days after Hogwild 96, tune in with us there. Grant, your final thoughts on Hogwild 96. What a pile of fuck. It's a pile of fuck, ladies and gentlemen. Tune in next time for a hopefully less pile of fuck on Late to the Nitro Party. Good night.